the National Democratic Congress, now opposition, uh, set up a committee led by Professor Kwesi Boche and is going around the country taking views about why the party lost the elections. Uh, it's led to all sorts of confusion, um, people fighting here and there, giving one reason or the other, people saying some took money, they didn't use the money for the purposes, they sat on the money, so to speak, or they hoarded the money, among other things. And um, even the president has had to step in to say that there's a need for calmness and that the party will bounce back if they are committed to so doing. How, how would you um, say the process they are doing so far, they are going around the country and they are taking views about whatever had happened, and then suddenly they get to, you know, Koforidia and they meet this uh, resistance by the, the members who disrupted the whole uh, process, seeking to prevent you know, the, the party executives from attending the, the meeting because they feel that they already know the reasons. They, should, they don't need all of this. <laughs> Question really that some ask is, do you really need this committee? Uh, well, <clears throat> yes and no. Uh, you can never know everything. And um, it would be good to broaden the deliberative process of trying to unearth exactly what happened. You may know generally um, the causes, but the specifics in each region, in each constituency, you may not be uh, party to some of the occurrences that, are, that took place in specific geographical locations. But when you move to the location, you will benefit from different reports uh, regarding the roles of even individuals in relation to the performance of the party in a specific constituency or a specific region. So going out there has helped a lot. I may have a sense of what happened in my constituency. I may not know what happened in the next constituency. I may not know what happened in the entire region. So. If I'm in Accra and you think that because I know I can report to the party hierarchy here, my knowledge of what happened may be very limited. So going out there, I think, has been a very helpful exercise. Secondly, it gives opportunity to people on the ground to also um, participate in the discussion, which is a, an important strategic discussion uh, that the party is engaged in now. And it also gives the party an opportunity to gauge to what extent the reforms that may need to happen uh, will be acceptable to the people or not. If the party may know that, for instance, the decision to extend or broaden the base when it comes to selecting parliamentary candidates was a major contributory factor, the party may know that. By having given the people the opportunity to participate and it turned out very bad for us because of that. Uh, if you want to withdraw that, what would be the impact on the party? That you may be able to pick up when you're out there in the regions, when you engage the uh, grassroots directly, and the proposal might even come from them, then you know that they are the in with you. You already know that issues. it's the executives who embezzled money, who didn't oh, give I, money I, for the purposes. I don't think that there can be one specific reason why you will lose an election, and that that reason can only be about the embezzlement of, of, of money. Go back to your previous records in, in that region and see where there was no embezzlement, whether you did any better. I mean, you can't, you can't point to one specific and say, well, because of this, that is why we lost election. Okay. You may be unhappy mm. with a particular person because mm. you perceive that the person had resources and did not release their resources right. and etc. So I think that mm. the process itself is good. If at one particular location some issues were raised, fine. It always happens, but it, it can't, it can't delegitimize the entire process. Right. Um, Mike, what, what, what do you say? What, what do you expect of this? This is not as simple as my brother is explaining it <laughs> at all. You see, there's you a not certain. You're not to make it simple for me. <laughs> I know, I know. It's okay. We, we, yes. we, there's a certain yeah. anger <laughs> in the NDC after losing this election because they never expected to lose by such magnitude. And that anger, apart from this um, supporters' issue, 
is even reflective in some of the name calling accusations. NDC, oh, MPP, you are taking, you are giving bribe, no substantiation. MPP, you are liars, no substantiation. You see, there, there's a certain pain in them. So we understand. As for pain, it can make you react in all sorts of ways. But please, when you call us liar, that we lie in the morning, substantiate it. Then we know that there's a basis for calling us liars. But until you do that, it is just name calling. And we don't want to entertain name calling. Why am I saying this also? It is reflective in the way that the Kofridia, you know, prior to this Kofridia, there was Tamale. Same thing. Breaking of chairs, throwing people around, all this kind of stuff that came. All because Mr. Teria Boatin in the Eastern region wanted to enter the meeting. And the people are angry. We have heard all the accusations, money being given, and as you are also a lawyer, it won't be fair to mention names, but situations. Big men have been given money by big businessmen, and yet the money disappeared. The people feel that if you had used this money for the right thing, it would have pushed us to work. And yet you have chopped the money. This is not surprising because one of the main things we accused NDC of, and that's why many Ghanaians voted against them, was that when they take money, they don't use it for the purposes that are supposed to be useful. So it is not surprising that the same accusation that is national, now the chickens have come home to roost. The individual NDC members who are angry now, Propag they have realized that, oh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> but you see, the issue is that when Ghanaians were saying it, those NDC supporters were saying it's not true. Now, after the election, they realized that there are big men chop money that they are not supposed to chop. And so now they are also angry. But yes, it's too late. The Ghanaians ahead and before them have realized this pattern. You see, there's a certain systematic endemic corruption within the system that has now come to the visualization of these NDC members. And they are like, wow, in Penny for this car. They have chopped our money, even money that is meant for campaign. They didn't give it to us, they chopped okay. it. So uh, let, thank you. just to land on this yeah. point. So um, it, it goes on to the same issue that, look, another one, deception. There's the last point. In the Eastern region, where this particular thing happened, they went around telling their supporters that they are going for Operation 50-50. And yet they got only five MPs, Operation 35%. So the people are saying, why do you deceive us to go and wear white white okay. to do this um, and all of that? Um, that is the yes. answer. Yes. The deception uh, Prof, uh, the... Doc, what's your, your expectation of the outcome? Uh, the president, uh, John Mahama, had to felt that there was a need to step in himself. And he tweeted that the NDC will bounce back. Cause of our loss is multifaceted. We need calm nerves and hard work to strengthen the base of the party. The party base also needs a bit of strengthening in democratic culture. You see, um, it's not always that threatening, routers behavior. You have to cold-headedly look at what went wrong. And you should respect the decision of the electorate. Because this same electorate also gave you power. Mm. And they've taken it. So there are broader issues. But not allowing the committee to do its work is not helpful to them as well. Right. Um, because at the end of the day, decisions are made on the basis of cold facts. Maybe sometimes decisions are made on the basis of emotions and so on. But when you've lost elections and you Mr. want to Kutu, come back, they wanted the committee to do that. Uh, um, okay, you've taken. Thank you. Yeah. You've taken my uh, point. Uh, okay. Uh, who they felt were responsible mm. to come and interfere okay. with the work of yes, the Yes. Yes. Right. So, so, mm. so let's hope that it's they should. Sh they should be talk to and but teach them because it happens so often that the grassroots culture of politics mm. is at variance with that of their leaders and there are always these things so so when do you converge in your views there has to be a procedure and i think at the end of it what i expect would happen is that uh, i think the leader of the delegation uh, is a highly respected right. person and mm. i think he would do a good job and tell the truth mm. so they should cooperate with him a little bit more so yeah. what do you say well 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 see i was a bit intrigued by kofi adam's thing <laughs> I think he created a certain distortion in order to cover up the truth. Mm. 2001, uh, after their defeat, they, they set up a reorganization committee. Okay. I think Dr. Obeda Samoa was initially in charge. But the point about money being kept in his house, if you recall, it became a court case. 
some two policemen were arrested and charged for allegedly stealing party cash from the chairman's house. Mm. In court, the evidence was tended to the effect that the monies were party cash, not the personal money of the party chairman. So the point about, oh, he, the people claim that he brought the money out to dry and see that one, it is his own dramatization. <laughs> that is his own distortion, distortion to hide the core of the evidence that indeed party cash was taken out, uh, okay. stolen. And indeed, after 2001, big men in NDC openly accused the party chairman of hiding monies and not delivering the monies and all that. They wrote articles. Tony Edu did, Spio Grabra did. So he shouldn't distort things. Bottom line, it is obvious that some guys who took monies from the center did not apply it for the purpose. I think that's obvious. You see, when you win an election, accountability is forgotten. It is when you are defeated that the issue of accountability comes to the fore. <laughs> If they had won, with all this yeah. massive propaganda and everything, the right. incumbents, your, nobody would have thought of one Peshwa getting missing. The truth is that they chopped their money, and the defeat has exposed them. <laughs> I'm sure the president knows, I mean the former president, he knows they chopped their money. <laughs> oh, he knows. He doesn't know. Who told okay. you that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. The way Kukuma is putting it, that they, they chopped the money. They okay. This um, so uh, this is where we draw the curtains on this uh, uh, morning's edition of News File. My guests have been Kweku Bako, Abdel Malik Kweku Bako, Editor-in-Chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Dr. Emmanuel Akwete is Executive Director of IDEC. Maham Ayarga is Member of Parliament for Boku Central. And Michael Quay Jr. is Deputy Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party. I'm Samson Ladi Ayanini. The news is up next. My outfit, as always, is by Latida. You can call Latida 020 433 6444. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>